Welcome to Hannity. Buckle up tonight. Hope of a possible treatment now exists. It appears very, very real. We will have a big report. And as always, we will bring you facts without fear, without hysteria, without panic. We're the United States of America, land of the free, home of the brave. They're not just words. Also tonight, Vice President Pence will be joining us. And we'll hear from a COVID-19 patient who says his life was saved. He was on literally at death's door. His doctor said there's nothing else that they can do. He said goodbye to his family. Then he was treated with an anti-malaria drug called hydrochloroquine. Truly miraculous recovery. So are we close to a treatment that may potentially save thousands and thousands of lives? We will investigate fully tonight and a report on how just repulsive the mob and the media, how they really are. That's all moments away. But tonight we start with the Democratic Party and their despicable behavior. Over the weekend, lawmakers, both sides of the aisle, they hammered out a trillion-dollar emergency spending bill. That legislation proposed billions of dollars, let's see, for workers, for small businesses, for a struggling big industry like the airline industry, the cruise industry, billions for hospitals and cash payments to Americans that need it, that are making under $99,000 a year. Our fellow Americans are hurting. We rebuilt Europe. We saved the world from evil and tyranny time and time again. Now it's time to help out our American family. But what happens unexpectedly, or maybe predictably, this morning, Schumer, Pelosi torpedo the bill. They are now saying they will not pass anything that does not include an insane laundry list of unrelated items, nothing to do with corona. This is beyond disgraceful. I predicted this would happen. So why are they delaying critical aid, financial assistance to American workers, small businesses, large businesses that have had to shut down? Look at your screen. This is what they want. They want tax credits for windmills and solar power. In other words, they want their Green New Deal one way or the other. So they're willing to deny desperate Americans in need for this? They also want new emission mandates for the airline industry. Okay, mandatory reporting of greenhouse gas statistics for every airline flight? In other words, why don't we just kick all of you in the teeth that work in the airline industry when you're down? We'll just kick you right in the teeth. Americans need to put food on the table, pay their rent, pay their mortgages, their car payments, tell their kids that they're not going to have to pull them out of college. Where are their priorities tonight as the nation waits? Like with the virus, what are the Democrats doing? What were they doing when the president implemented that critical, crucial travel ban and that critical and crucial quarantine? Oh, that's right. They were impeaching the president. And forgetful Joe, oh, he called the president xenophobic, hysterical, and a fear monger. Now, as part of some Green New Deal fantasy, they're literally trying to put airline companies out of business. They're going to let Americans live in a state of anxiety and worry and fear because they're not doing their job. This is what government's supposed to do, serve the people. They're public servants. And that's not all. Democrats are also demanding broad new powers for labor unions. Oh, of course, they give us all the money for our elections. The forgiveness of student loan debt, new rules surrounding racial diversity on corporate boards, uh, subsidies for newspapers, and so much more. What does this have to do with people that need help now? Now, Democratic Majority Whip James Clyburn called the quote a tremendous opportunity to restructure things, to fit our vision. Small businesses suffering. Entire industries, like the restaurant industry, are struggling. Their workers are losing their jobs. They are afraid they may lose their homes or get kicked out of their apartment. And what is James Clyburn's agenda? He's worried about restructuring things to fit their radical socialist vision. That is a party, the radical extreme Democratic Socialist Party, and that is them being a national disgrace again, because they've done nothing for three years anyway. They should be ashamed of this conduct, but don't hold your breath. Now, Democrats, for those of you that have some sense, reason, compassion, understanding, are you embarrassed? about what this party has become. What has your party, if you're a Democrat, done for you in the last three years to help safety and security, peace and prosperity? No, 24-7, every minute, second hour of every 24-hour day, hate Trump. That's all they've done. Even during a time of great urgency, when our fellow Americans need their government to act, they care more about their radical agenda than helping American workers, small business, big business. As Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said, 
Democrats won't let us fund hospitals or save small businesses unless they get to dust off the Green New Deal and, and, and put carbon footprint it, uh, language into this? Take a look. Democrats won't let us fund hospitals or save small businesses unless they get to dust off the Green New Deal. Are you kidding me? This is the moment to debate new regulations that have nothing whatsoever to do with this crisis? That's what they're up to over there. American people need to know it. How can half the Senate not rise to the occasion at a time when everybody else in the country is pulling together? They're pulling us apart. Good for Mitch McConnell. Now, I can't recall him, frankly, being that angry, and rightfully so. When Americans need help the most, there's your radical socialists, Pelosi and Schumer. They're caring about carbon footprints and their own political agenda. Now they're taking a page out of the political playbook of, remember Obama's chief of staff, Dead Fish Emmanuel, Rombo? A lot he did for the people in Chicago that are getting shot and killed every weekend for year after year after year. Anyway, many years ago, he said, quote, you never let a serious crisis go to waste. It's an opportunity to do things you could not do before. Well, guess what? Emmanuel, he's on state-run conspiracy television, MSDNC, where he gave Democrats the exact same advice. Take a look. As somebody once also said when I worked for President Obama, never allow a crisis to go to waste. This will not be our last epidemic. We had H1N1. We had SARS. Well, we have to ensure, and this is where presidential leadership counts, that we will, this will not be the last endemic, a pan, a pandemic, but it must be the last economic depression because of a pandemic. And then start setting out how to use this crisis to invest in public health. Tonight, every American has a right to be angry and ticked off. Democrats cannot, for even a second, put aside their petty politics to actually help our fellow Americans in need. This is beyond a betrayal to every American worker, the people that really make this country great, those that are struggling now, and even some Democratic members of Congress, maybe a few sensible ones, very few, reportedly growing weary of these disgusting political games. But not quid pro quo Dr. Joe. That's Joe Biden. He's trying to use the coronavirus to score cheap political points. Remember, he sent out his letter fundraising off the virus. When President Trump announced his travel ban on January 31st, oh, that was 10 days after the first confirmed case in the United States. What did Biden say? The president's travel ban quarantine was xenophobic, hysteria, and fear-mongering. Stands by that today. Now Biden is giving the single most bizarre series of weird online speeches about how he would be handling the pandemic so much better than Donald Trump. Only problem is everything he mentions Trump has already done a long time ago and the things he wouldn't do may, would have made a difference. In the first speech, he seemingly forgot. Remember that speech is when he was like, oh, I forgot I'm on doing this. Let me, let me, let me. And they had to cover the screen. Today, he lost his train of thought. Oh, what a shocker. Does he even know what day it is? By the way, it's not Super Thursday. Struggling with a teleprompter. He's like, hurry up. I have nothing to say. Hurry, hurry. Watch. And, uh, and in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, we have to uh, make sure that we, uh, we are in a position that we are, well, let me, let me go to the second thing. I've spoken enough of that. And we need to build an arsenal of democracy in, as we did in 1940. We can take, we, we, we can make a personal productive equipment. Look, here's the deal. We have to do what we did in the 40s and the 20s, and the 2020s. Oh, sorry. We'll have more on Biden's confusion and bitterly partisan response to the pandemic. He, too, has been disgraceful here. But first, okay, what do I always say on this program when I throw to Laura Ingram? Let not your hearts be troubled. We have some amazing prospects on the horizon, news to share. So while the Democrats play political games to score cheap political points and an extreme agenda, well, the Trump administration and private businesses are stepping up to the plate. In fact, you are now watching history. President Trump is now rewriting every rule on how not only this country, but the world will deal with future pandemics, things we've never done before. Travel bans, oh, I wonder if that will be implemented faster next time, knowing what we know now. Drive up testing private-public partnerships. You see the telemedicine that's coming online? How many emergency room visits could be stopped if people at 2 in the morning can call a doctor 
at their avail on their FaceTime and say, um, my, my son or daughter has the croup and making really weird noises like a seal, er, er, and then uh, what do I do? Well, first put some steam in the shower, do that first. If it doesn't work, call me back in an hour. Maybe a third, maybe more emergency room visits will end. Slashing red tape with the FDA, compassionate care, the right to try testing new treatments of public-private partnerships. Every one of these things is innovative. President Trump on every area setting a new precedent, rewriting the books as we watch, as we speak. How many Americans would have contracted this virus but for the travel ban and the quarantine? That one decision 10 days after the first known case in this country. That was January 31st. First known case, January 21st. How many more may have died? Moving forward with these new rules, the new book he's writing in front of us, how many lives will potentially be saved in the future? America's private businesses are also to their great credit. You know, you listen to the liberals, they often trash Walmart. We're smelly Walmart Trump supporters. I always say, yeah, I love Walmart. I love Target. I love CVS. I love Walgreens, Walmart. I love them all. Look at this. All of these companies, and even companies I'm not that fond of, Google, Facebook, 3M, all of them deserve credit tonight. Donating space, money, energy, and assistance in any way they can helping to get the products to those in need. Look at GM, look at Ford. They say, oh, we can make ventilators. You need some? We hear, keep reading that we might not have enough. Some of America's top hospitals are manufacturing their own protective gear. That's why I said at one point, we will ultimately probably here save the world again. How many times has America come to the rescue? Best medical researchers, scientists, doctors, nurses, and medical professionals in the entire world. We keep the world free. We bail out and rebuild Europe. We beat fascism, Nazism, communism, imperial Japan, and more recently, radical Islamism. Tesla, GM, Ford, America's top pharmaceutical companies, those evil, evil drug companies, donating medicine and working around the clock to help develop a vaccine. Never before have we been able to break down the sequence of a virus. It used to take years. We did it in, what, five, six weeks? And, get, and we now have first trial uh, potential, hopefully, vaccines in the process. And get this. Several big businesses are hiring massive amounts of people, thousands of new job postings at Amazon and 7-Eleven and Walmart. I think Walmart said they're hiring 150,000 people. Maybe you need a bridge job until you get your job back. By the way, I put the list fully up on Hannity.com. Other Walgreens are offering uh, bonuses along with Walmart to their employees, part-time and full-time. Many big box stores are now offering to pay raises and double overtime. This is what we as Americans do. This is who we are. We come together. We help one another in a time of need. Nobody saw this coming. Anyone that says they saw it coming is full of it because they didn't. We all work hard. We all find solution, solutions. We're innovative. We're creative. We are the United States of America, the greatest country God gave man. We're blessed to live here. Yes, one nation. Well, you know, we're endowed by a, a thing. A thing. That's, you know... Oh, the thing, God that creates everything. Speaking of which, U.S. doctors and scientists, this is the big news tonight. They are seeing success with new treatments, experimental treatments. On my radio program, one of those doctors detailed his very important progress. Here's what he said. You've had a 100% success rate. Well, I define success as not having to go to the hospital since hospitals are overwhelmed right now. So I've uh, treated aggressively these patients, and I've seen remarkable results within uh, the shortness of breath issue resolved within four to six hours. Now, this doctor published uh, that he and his, well, team have now treated patients with that regimen. None of them died. None of them were hospitalized. He now has 350 case, test cases that he's referring to. Now, similar methods are now being tested all over the world. For example, researchers in France, they have released a preliminary study showing how a combination of hydroxy, uh, chloroquine, and antibiotics could be used to mitigate symptoms of those impacted with the virus and heal them quicker. And one more good piece of information. We learned today at the president's press conference with his task force that young people, thankfully, are not dying of coronavirus. A prominent Nobel laureate biophysicist from Stanford MAD modeled the outbreak and is now predicting that a fairly quick end to this pandemic. And he predicted accurately everything that was going to happen in China. And we have more good news. As of March 18th, there have been zero fatalities from children and only one death of one teenager worldwide. Whew. 
We get nervous based on the new numbers. First, we were told up until about a week ago that it wasn't impacting kids. Then we hear it is. That makes it more scary. That is good news tonight. This is a serious disease, as I said. Oh, back January 27th. Got to take it seriously. But if we're going to get strategic and we're going to find solutions, you can't panic. Now, we have more good news coming up and more facts without fear.